893 AD, Earth, the western coast of Iceland. The frost giant had terrorized these people for weeks. It had eaten three goats, four dogs, and two children. The mothers in the village prayed for help from the gods, and help they did receive. I led a group of twenty men, tracking the giant to its den in the highlands. It battled us for hours, swinging trees and hurling boulders. Many Vikings found their way to Valhalla, until my axe hacked its guts to bloody slush and locked off its head. That was four days ago. Since then, I have eaten more goats than the Frost Giant, drank enough meat to drown a dozen sailors, and made love to half the women in the village. I am Thor Odinson, God of Thunder, <laughs> Prince of Asgard, heir to the throne of the Realm Eternal. I love my life. A cry in the night. Please let it be another giant. Ah! There's someone in the water! A devil man! I saw his face! The girl speaks the truth! There's someone there, alright. Or at least what's left of them. Red chunks have been washing up for hours now. All along the shore. Poor bastard must have fallen off a ship and been torn apart on the rocks. Is he from our village? Hell, it could be my father for all I know. There's not enough left in the fool to tell much of anything. Not so. I can tell you one thing for certain. He was not from our village. I have heard tell of feathered men such as this. From Norsemen who claim to have sailed on across the sea towards the edge of the world. You are half right, Olfar Sonforn. Our visitor is indeed from across the water, but I do not believe he is a man at all. Lord Thor, pray tell, what do you see when you look into those eyes? He was a god. A god? Odin's beard. But what could have done this to a god? Even a heathen one from across the sea. It must have been a sea serpent. Only thing it could have been. Look at that flesh. There's not a bite on him. He wasn't eaten. He was butchered. What in all the nine worlds can butcher a god? Whatever it was, I guarantee you its skull is no match for Asgardian steel. Come now, Norseman. Why stand we here with the dead, when you have a longhouse filled with cold mead and warm women? Thor, for one, has yet to drink his fill of either. <laughs> Boy, fetch some wood. Enough to build a funeral pyre. A butcher's god. Tell me, my lord, have you ever seen anything such as this? I've seen war in the heavens. I've seen gods suffer and bleed. I've seen immortal fathers subject their own sons to torments you could never imagine. I've seen hell itself. But now, I've never seen anything like the horror in this god's eyes. To what gods do you pray, old woman? All of them. The present day, deep space, the planet Indigar. I've... I've never prayed before, so I'm not exactly sure how to do this. But here goes. Dear Thor, my people need your help. It hasn't rained on my planet for many years. Everything here has died. Soon, we will die too. Everyone throughout the space ways says you're the greatest god who's ever lived and that you can do anything. Please, Thor.
power. Save us. I hear the prayer from a universe away. Across the cosmos, I bring with me the storm. I crack the ground till water gushes forth. I carve rivers where once was desert. I am Thor, warrior of Asgard, avenger of Earth. And I swear by all that is holy, no one will die here today. You came! I never dreamed you actually would! I heard your prayer, little one. And what kind of god would I be if I did not answer prayers? Now, if you'll excuse me, there is always someone somewhere in need of smiting with a very large hammer. And Thor is always happy to oblige. Please, stay. We haven't much, but what we have is yours. Our cooks do wondrous things with rockworm and scab bark, and we brew the finest cave slime ale in all the system. I'm sorry, but I simply must... Did you say ale? So there I was, riding a chariot pulled by flying goats with 300 angry storm giants in pursuit, and me laughing all the while. <laughs> When at last I crossed the Rainbow Bridge, and beheld the most beautiful sight in all the Nine Realms. Asgard. Golden City of the Gods. Where all Father Odin and noble Queen Freya together ruled the heavens. Surrounded by an army of the bravest warriors who have ever hefted a sword. Are there dragons there too? Hmm? Dragons? Yeah, 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 sometimes. Plus elves, and dwarves, and the occasional troll or two, but mostly just gods. The finest gods who've ever lived. More gods than there are stars in the sky. Sleep soundly, young one. May the eyes of Asgard be ever upon you. We owe you our lives, Lord Thor. You owe the girl. It was her prayer that brought me here. But tell me, Elder, why did she not pray to her own gods? Her own gods? I don't understand. Here on Indigar, we have no gods. No oh, gods? In all my travels, I've never known a world without gods. When I was a child, my mother told me stories of gods from long ago, who lived in a jeweled city high in the clouds. But those were just stories for children. Like the ones you told about your dragons and magic rainbows. <laughs> there was a time that I might have killed you for an insult such as that, old man. I save your world, and you dare doubt me. Uh, I meant no offense, my lord. I just thought, do you mean to tell me there really are rainbow bridges and flying goats, and that your father truly does sit on the throne of heaven? <sighs> my lord... Let us speak no more of my father. Tell the girl, when Thor finds her wayward gods, he will see that they come home. A world without gods. With such a myriad of pantheons spread across the cosmos, I never dreamed such a thing possible. As it turns out, it is not. Indeed, there was a time this world had gods. So what then has become of them? Oh! oh, oh, oh. Sky Lords of Indigar! A fellow immortal comes in peace! Show yourselves! Nothing. Nothing in the air but echoes and dust. I find a treasure room filled with mountains of gold, untouched for many years, and an arsenal still stocked with all manner of weapons, swords rusting in their scabbards. But no gods. In their library are countless scrolls Filled with tales of the ruthless and powerful warriors who once called this sky castle home. 
Yet I find no sign of war or disaster. No trace of anything living or dead. No clue at all what became of them. A mystery for another day, I suppose. I am ready to leave this city to its ghosts. When I happen to notice one last building. A storage house by the looks of it. I don't even consider it worth checking. Until I notice the chains. No other door in this city bore chains. I realize why this one does. As soon as the smell hits me. Hogscar the Harsh. Crawskin the Cruel. Lady Vile, the Goddess of Atrocities. Lord Allblood the Inexorable. And his thirteen sons by thirteen brides. I recognize them all from the stories in the scrolls. These are the missing gods of Indigar. Thus is one mystery solved as another is born. An entire pantheon of fearsome immortals. Every man, woman, and child. All butchered like animals in their own fortress. Without any signs of invasion or warfare. Without a sign of combat of any kind. No. To even call this butchery is an insult to honest butchers. This... This was something else entirely. God's flesh rots slowly. By my guess, they've been here a few hundred years. Undisturbed until now. No army did this. No giants either. No stench of sorcery in the air. This was no ritual. No one-time explosion of madness. Flesh wasn't eaten. So neither was it a mindless beast. There was nothing mindless about this. Their deaths were skillfully prolonged. Their suffering relished. This was the work of one hand. One that was steady and accomplished. And extremely well versed in its art. There's a variety of wounds. The work of many different weapons. But no sign of a single one. Meaning the killer carries them with him. Like a carpenter with his toolbox. This was far from the first time he'd killed. And unless he stopped, far from the last. The face of a god. Frozen forever in agony and terror. I haven't seen anything like this since... Since... Oh, hell. It attacks like an animal. No skill, only fury. This is not my killer. This is his guard dog. His... very strong... guard dog. I remember a day, a millennium ago, a dead god floating in the sea, and later, a winged horse drenched in blood. A cave of horrors. I know who did this. If Gore the God Butcher yet lives, it can only mean one thing. More gods are sure to die. Many millennia from now, the Great Hall of Asgard. The quiet. 
That's what I hate the most. The wretched, unending quiet of this place. This hall used to be filled with the noise of battle, of feasting. Now there's just the shuffle of those things up there, mocking me with their blackened silence. And the soft, labored breathing of a tired old god. Damn this quiet. If I'm to die, it will be with a weapon in my hand and a roar in my throat. Bring me my arm! No answer. <laughs> I'm so damn old. I keep forgetting there's no one left. No one left but me. I am Thor Odinson, king of a broken Asgard, last of all the gods. And today, I will try yet again to see Valhalla. I vaguely remember how this started, a long ago, with a dead god floating in the sea. And later, a little girl's prayer on a world without gods. Come, gods! There is still one god left in Asgard! And he would have words with thee! And now this is how it ends. With blood and thunder. With hammer and sword. With one last stand at the gates of heaven. The Odin Sword is drawn! The end of all things is nigh! Death to the Butcher of Gods and his Black Berserkers! Death to the enemies of Asgard! Whatever happens now, whatever my fate, know that I face it like a god.